So good type respects its elders. Bodoni is sort of an elder at this point, and it represents, I suppose, an entire genre of type um, whose aesthetic is that of luxury and so on. Um, but how did it come to be that way? So what makes Bodoni look like Bodoni? The answer is Dido, and Fournier, and Baskerville, and Caslon and Grandjean, and Garamond, and a whole bunch more. This is really cool. What you're seeing here is a uh, video that you can find on YouTube called Everything is a Remix. It's made by a very smart guy called Kirby Ferguson, who's found uh, some very interesting parallels between cultural icons like Star Wars, Led Zeppelin, Bob Dylan, and the things, the places and people that influence them. And from Kirby's perspective, he says that our creativity really comes from outside rather than within. We're unconsciously dependent on each other for the raw materials of creativity that we then repackage as our own thing. And so he suggests everything is a remix. And I think that's especially true in type. Typefaces are really a product of their past and their lineage. They owe a lot to others. If you look closely at typography, you will see more than just letters. Typefaces often reflect the mood of the time in culture, politics, design, fashion. And in this way, they also reflect each other. They inspire each other. They compete with each other. And that's really what drives the art form forward. Really good type often starts in that melting pot, like something, something boiling over. Cabell is a good example. So Cabell was created around 1926 by Rudolf Koch. It was one of several post-First World War fonts that um, was based on the ideals of rationality and functionality. The period of time gave us the Bauhaus and other fonts like Futura, Erbar, and you can see their roots and things like Aven uh, Avenir and others now. And so you can even see this in the typeface if you look at its construction. Its form is very idealistic. It's geometric because it looks constructed. It's put together, planned, engineered. Um, trying to distance itself maybe from uh, calligraphic roots, the quill, and so on. So Cabell was um, pretty popular until midway through the century. Uh, whenever a chap called Victor Caruso, working at ITC in the 1970s, um, decided it was time for a, a remix. And so ITC picked up uh, Cabell for a couple of reasons. The first is that ITC are interesting in that they were one of the first foundries that didn't really have a history in metal. And they were, um, I suppose, born at a time when phototype selling was becoming a thing, and that meant new possibilities. So ITC Cabell was Cabell retuned for technological reasons. But they also took the opportunity to kind of nudge the aesthetic of Cabell slightly closer to the ITC ideal, and maybe to reflect the mood of the time, right? The late 70s, so it looks a little more uh, jovial, less serious than that old rational thing from the 20s, maybe even a little disco. And so that was great, and that um, lasted for a long time until last year. A very talented graphic designer called Mark Chutes decided it was time for a, another remix because he was testing the original Cabell and the ITC Cabell in um, situations that weren't working out, things like running paragraphs of text and on high-resolution screens. And so this is original Cabell. This is Neue Cabell from last year. And you can see it's still re respectful of its roots, I would say, um, but it's more open, it's more readable. We find more space here, and all of a sudden, Cabell is reading well in paragraphs. Mark also added um, some more grades, some more weights, flexibility to the family, and also found opportunity to uh, create some more modernity, I would say, in the design. Now, all of this didn't uh, sacrifice the quirky voice of Cabell, I would say, and one of the most interesting things to me about this and what demonstrates respect for its elders is that all the old versions are still in the font. So with open type, you can access all the alternative characters that were in the previous versions, at least the most, um, 
the most noticeable ones. And so I think that's very respectful. Remixing something for new contexts, giving it new abilities, and also um, respecting what came before. It's probably um, not talked about so much is every time one of these remixes or revivals happen, um, it inspires a new group of type designers, a new group of graphic designers. They take some raw ingredients from this and they package it up, create something of themselves. And so the cycle continues. So good type respects its elders.